announcements in our emails every single day. Or somebody will send an announcement to us and say, hey, this looks really good. I think we should do this. Well, there are certain things that you have to look at to assess whether you're even eligible. So let's begin with number one. The first one <clears throat> on our sheet, because there were seven altogether. The first one was a UNDP, which is United Nations. It's an engagement of CSOs, NGOs for amplifying youth project. Okay, does anyone wanna start us out? One, are you eligible for this grant? Someone want to answer that? What did someone yes, have no. to answer? This is how uh, I would say no. Okay. Why uh, would you? Uh, sorry. All right. Did anyone say yes? Yes. Okay. Why? The the UN UNDP is an organization that works in Jamaica, so that would I think that that for that we could access it. It's just absolutely. that absolutely. You are right. Are you eligible? Yes, because it is Jamaica. Okay. There are few grants available just for Jamaica. Anytime it says Jamaica, you should be looking at the grant because that says that you are the only country in the world can, that can look at that grant. Okay, so yes, you are eligible. Okay, does this grant meet the needs of your organization? Yes or no? Uh, I would say no. Why? Because we are a farmer's cooperative and this is looking at um, youths really. In an oh, area. Okay, so it's looking at youth. So yeah. exactly who are farmers? No, no, um, yeah. <laughs> well, um, okay. Then, yeah. Who are farmers? And who are the farmers you're trying to teach and to attract and recruit? It's not because, because of just because um, the youths, why I look at it. It, it isn't um, talking about farming in any way that I see. Ah. I've been looking at it and it doesn't say anything about farming. Okay. So it yeah, has to I say said. to you, it has to say farming. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it would have to have something like that. You know. Okay, but down further, it says youth-led micro-projects and okay. provide technical support. Right. Okay, yeah. so doesn't farming and agriculture have micro-projects and you need technical support? Yes, yes. Okay, true. all right. So all right. you have to start opening your mind a little about where your eligibility is and whether it meets your organization's needs. Right. Yeah. Think bigger. Right. Okay. Yeah. Will right. you need partners? Yes. Why? Because one of the things that happens is that um, some of the area which we are looking at, we, are, we don't have persons who are versed in those areas are trained. So we'll have to go to the agencies which are there with those persons to work along with us. Absolutely. You're not youth specialists, therefore you're gonna want a partner who deals with youth. Are you gonna need someone who does micro projects or technical support? You might want to do that, okay? So that's where you might need your partners. Now, the last piece of this is, are you organizationally, do you have the organizational capacity to do this grant? Uh, uh, Is there uh, anyone no. who said yes? No, I, I wouldn't say yes. Okay. Because it tells us that you must have 
a minimum of five years of relevant experience. You need to have proven experience in supporting local communities. You need proven experience in financial management and you have to have previous cooperation with international agencies or government partnerships. In other words, you need to have had grants before. Uh, all right, so let me, let me ask you okay. a question. So yeah, let me ask you a question. Go ahead. Our organization, the Yotan Watershed, Antoine, we have been working with international persons, UNDP, USAID, Peace Corps, okay. For since um, 2007, 2008, there. Okay. We have done a grant in, in that time also. So would that have, and we have done, we were the one who did our reporting and so forth. So would that make us qualify in that area that you're talking about organization capacity? It sounds like it. I, I would have to look further at your documentation, but it sounds like you have that piece of it. So, okay. it, so right. it sounds like you should be looking, okay, more closely at this grant to see the possibilities and what kind of partnering you could do if you really wanted to go for this. Okay. Now, okay. notice though that the deadline is January 18th, 2021. All right. Okay, does that mean we throw this away? Mm, uh, um, <laughs> yes, I, I would say yes, because okay. the deadline has passed. Okay, no. Now, <laughs> why <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> because we're gonna talk a little about pipelines, but this is a grant that you have now determined is a potential project that you could go for. What you mm -hmm. want to do is you want to put this on your registry pipeline. You want to look at this in the future. In yeah, six okay. months, you're going to want to look at the UNDP Jamaica, and you want to look at Amplifying Youth Project and see if they're still funding. Okay. Yeah. All right. Are they going to fund for 2022? If they are, then you can start preparing because you already know a lot about what this project's gonna be. You can start preparing with partners six months ahead of time. Yes. Okay. Thank Good. you. Yeah. So that's number one. The second grant that we're looking at is called Right Livelihood Award. All right? Yeah. How many people think they are eligible for this? I think we are eligible. Why? All right. As an organization, what we have been doing is working to develop economic ventures within our region here. Okay. To help our farm, um, area, person within our area. Okay. And we have been doing community service over a period of time. Also, I am a part of a disaster team which has worked with International Red Cross and had done an uh, assessment which was, which was um, presented at Japan and a disaster forum and so forth, which Cause us to get and a good amount of assistance from International Red Cross. So okay. I think we can be very but that's not how you assess. What okay. you do is you look at the words. The announcement itself will give you information. I have highlighted. Now that's one of the things that you should do when you're yeah. assessing grants. You take a, and when you're reading proposals, you take a highlighter. Yeah. To determine certain information. In the yeah. very first sentence, it says it will receive nominations from all over the world. Okay? Therefore, yeah. you are eligible because you are part of the world. Yes. So all right. Where the one before said Jamaica. This one okay. says anywhere in the world. 
Good. You. You're eligible. All right. Yes. So, does this meet your organizational needs? Yes, because of all the things that I've said about you. Uh, uh, said, uh, 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 that's not good enough. No, no, no. Find me something. Find words in the announcement. <laughs> Find words in the announcement. Okay. okay. All right. Let all right. Me, Let I'm me I'm tell going, you what the words are. The I'm words, going. the words that you look for are cash awards. Cash awards. That meets the needs of your organization, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. That's it. Yes. Next one. Would you need partners? Would we need what? Partners. Yes, ma'am. We would. No, 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 no. Yes. Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. We would need partners. No. No, because there are. This is an award. This is an award to an organization or an individual within an organization. So no, you don't want partners. In an organization, and we are going to be working for the people there once once things is given. The cash yeah, but, is that, but I'm talking about partners as other organization partners. Okay, so for, to get that to receive the cash, we wouldn't need partners. What no, this do one you don't need partners. Okay. What we be doing with the money is a different thing. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you have the organizational capacity to go for this grant? Yes. You have to be nominated for this grant. You can't nominate yourself. You don't accept self-nomination. Exactly. Exactly. Very good point. Thank you. Okay. So can you get someone to nominate you? Yes. Can you nominate yourself? No. Good point. Yes, but it was talking about capacity. It wasn't asking you if you ah, would But do you have the organizational capacity to nominate yourself? Of course you don't. No, no, no. I, uh, no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's number two. So some of you might look at that one, but most of you probably wouldn't. Okay, let's go on to number three. The Rising Tide Foundation invites LOIs, letters of intent, for freedom of practice grants. Okay, first of all, are you eligible for this grant? It is, yes. No, the has passed. It's passed, that's true, that's very good. Now, would you still be eligible if it wasn't passed? Because this might be, if, if it's good, you're gonna wanna put it on your pipeline to look at six months from now, go into that website and see if they still have that grant and if they're still going to do future funding. Ms. Right. Leslie? Yes. Ms. Yes. Leslie? Yes, go ahead. We were looking at the announcement and we were not sure because when we were reading it, it was telling, up, telling us about that it, it is about cancer research. So I'm not sure what to say. Okay, good. Good. Our organization is not into cancer research, so. I, okay. I, I would say we are eligible because the first line in, in it said, the Rising Tide Foundation seeks to promote freedom to improve yes. the quality it, of life everywhere. Say that. I agree it says that. But then on reading it, it was talking, the founder had an, uh, based on this development, I think his grandmother and aunt somehow met their demise in cancer. So, so I'm just saying, I'm not sure my organization would be eligible because we are not in cancer research. Cancer? Yeah. Rising cancer. 
I stand correct. Rising tide. Um, I don't see anything about cancer research in here, do you? No, I'm looking at that. I don't see that's it, and I'm reading. No, I don't I either. I see where they're talking about. We went on the website. Oh, you went on the website. Oh, yes. good for you. <laughs> Very good for you. Okay. Okay. But so we're in our search. <laughs> that's very good. Now, yeah. this now when you go onto a website, though, you want to look at uh, what their new projects are and what they have out for proposals. Okay. So you're right. You're not a research organization. If you wanted to do research into farming and sustainable Great. farming and how to meet the SDGs, all right, and how that integrates with human rights and freedom, that's quite a stretch, okay? I'm not saying it can't be done, but I'm saying that this one seems like it is not for most of the organizations that are on this training, okay? Now, if someone you know is going for this, and they have a component that involves agriculture or sustainable food, that kind of thing, you might be a good partner to them. But as this uh, reads, think, Leslie, yes, I think it, 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 it while the foundation or the, the, the founder would have specifically um, mentioned to cancer in this grant they are not saying that your 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 what they are um, given is geared towards um, research in, in cancer it's really about development uh, because is. if you if you look at mm -hmm. um, one of the statements that they said um, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, She's in America. I could pick it up. Right. So it said it gears um, to help advance its vision to whatever. Let me see. I miss it. Okay. It's specifically, the foundation seeks to promote yes. projects aimed at developing private sector solutions to societal problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and I think that that's the one area that you would want to investigate a little further if you're mm -hmm. into um, the big picture about mm -hmm. how agriculture fix, fits into the world environment. Right. Um, but if you're not, if you are basically struggling to be in um, a farming agricultural service center, then this probably is not where you want to go. So good assessment, good. Let's go to the next one. Number four, smart farming innovations for small scale producers. Are you eligible? No, we are not. Why not? The countries that they're focused. Ah. <laughs> Exactly. And where is that? That's and that's like a page and a half later, isn't it? it is. So you read all of this and you're getting excited and you're saying, oh, yes, we yes, this is exactly what we want to do. Oh, my heavens. It's up to a quarter of a million dollars for a year. Then you see Africa and Asia. <laughs> yes, yes. You're absolutely right. It is and that's why it is so important to read through announcements so that you're not going to waste your time because someone else is going to only read the first couple paragraphs and they're going to send it to you and they're going to say, we need to go for this grant. And you need to be able to show that you're not eligible. Very good. Very good. All right. Number five. Gender-based violence small grants program in the Caribbean. Are you eligible? 
No. Not in 2022. Maybe 2022? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, because of the fact that it's due in a couple days, correct? Yes. Um, that, but it's for different countries. I think Bahamas, Haiti. Right, the countries. Uh huh. That's another thing. The countries, when you actually get to the countries, you find out it's not the entire Caribbean. Very good. Very good. Um, the other thing is, it says under eligibility criteria, you must have experience in implementation of gender-based violence projects. Now, if you, if you were in St. Lucia or Barbados and you said, wow, this looks good. We'd like to use this, but we don't have any direct experience with gender-based violence projects. You find a partner who does have that experience. And why would you might, why would you think about doing this? because they're looking at the root causes of gender-based violence. And some of the root causes of gender-based violence comes down to issues of employment, okay? Training, education, um, socioeconomic issues. That's one of the reasons you might want to consider looking further but the countries eliminate you. Very good call. Number six, the Fontegro Foundation. This isn't due till April 9th. No, it's due. Okay. It's an inno innovation for sustainable and resilient agri food and territorial development in Latin America and Caribbean. Are you eligible? Although it says Latin America and um, the Caribbean, while we were checking, we only saw the Latin American countries. We we're looking to see if Jamaica would be a part of it, and we did not see that. Good, good. You went onto the website because yes. that's the thing I highlighted. I knew that we were going to have to go in there and check that out. Okay, very good because everything else looks really good on this one and you say, oh my goodness, yes, we'd like to go for it. And then when you find out you're not eligible, you can at least tell people we are not. You don't spend any more time, okay, trying to figure out if you can do this project. Very good. Yeah. Okay, now we're on number seven. Number seven. United Nations, this is the last one, United Nations Alliance for, of Civilizations. And inviting applications for Youth Solidarity Fund. Are you eligible? Yes or no? Uh, very tight deadline, Leslie. Huh? A very tight deadline. Okay, tight deadline. All right. Um, on the other hand, do you put this aside to look at again in six months? Uh, I would say yes. Okay. All right. Miss Miss Leslie. Yes. Thank you. I think you have to take into consideration that the majority of the persons in this has to be between the ages of 18 and 35. So if you don't have a good group of persons between that age group, then you're not eligible. The lead organization has to. Okay. So if you have a youth-led um, agricultural uh, co-op, okay, and you're working with them, all right, that partnership might work, okay? But there is one thing that has to be looked at really, really, really good. And you've been doing this all along, but you didn't tell me you did it on this one. In terms of eligibility, it says, right? You mean two years of operation? 
Well, that's another thing. You have to have two years of operation. Exactly. That means you have to have at least two years of audited financial statements. Okay. But the thing that bothers me is something that has to be looked at. It says, be registered and operate in one of the aforementioned countries. I went through this entire announcement. I did not see any aforementioned countries. <laughs> that means you have to go into the website you have to look at this particular announcement on their website. And then you have to hit aforementioned countries to get the list to see if Jamaica is one of those countries. Okay? All right. Okay. All right. So you guys did a really good job on this. Thank You're you. You're pretty aware of what things you have to look at now because it, it also allows you to kind of skim through a bunch of announcements. Now, since I had my first phone call with the Jamaican team back in early January, I have been going through all my daily emails of announcements. And anytime I saw something that possibly might be related to what you're doing here in Jamaica, I copy and pasted it into a file. So that's what you are assessing right now. You can use that same technique when you see announcements every day. You copy and paste them out, put them into a file, and then once a week, you go into them, eliminate the ones you're not eligible for, okay, and then start pipelining the ones that are interesting and that you are eligible for. All right, we'll talk about pipelining in a little bit. All right, we're going to go. we are completed that assignment. Thank you so much. You did a terrific job. I'm very impressed. Uh, and thank you all so far. Really highlighting what to look for because um, really research is a different thing for some people sometimes. We have to learn how to do research. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a yeah. skill and um, it, it takes time. Sometimes yeah. it takes you longer to do it, but the more you do it, the quicker you are at being able to eliminate uh, and see. You're also looking for certain things. You know what to look for. Yeah, that's a different one in itself. Very good. Mr. Sims, can we have the next slide? PowerPoint. Mr. Sims? Aha. Okay. Developing your grant proposal budget and administrative pieces. When you are working on, have a working draft for your grant proposal narrative, you are ready to develop the budget. So what that says is this, you have to have a draft, not a first draft, a skeletal draft of what your proposal is going to cover. And that's when you start developing your budget because there are some things you automatically know are going to have to be in your budget. You don't wait till halfway through the process to start your budget. It's not, it's not fair to the budget side. It's not fair to the accounting side, the financial people. They need time to prepare the budget just as you need time to write the grant. Okay, does that make sense? Good. All right, next slide, please. Good. The budget must align with your narrative. We have talked about this before. It is so important. This is a critical fact that you must always be aware of. Your budget has to be the same as your narrative. If you don't, okay, number three, items Expenses not itemized will be expected to be paid by you. 
All right. So you want to make sure that every task, every item is accounted for, whether it's an in kind matching or actual request for budget. All task time and materials must be accounted for because you're looking at a line item, but a line item budget. Now, the other, the reverse part of this is once you get the grant, you can only spend a line item only on that particular material or time or task. The line item is specific for expenditure to what it says it's going to pay for. If you try to use money for something else, all right, you will end up having to eat that. The auditor from your donor will catch you. Now, if you're having some problem with your expenditures, this is when you contact your, your contract representative and you start talking to them immediately about the fact that you're having some budgetary problems. Maybe you're not ready to spend a certain amount of money on what, what it's supposed to be spent on, but you're ready to spend it on something else. If they're aware of that, they can allow you to adjust the budget accordingly. So you're basically switching the expenditures from one month to another month. Be very careful. Make sure that your budgetary people are as in tuned with your project proposal and narrative as they are with the budget end of it. They have to understand it. You don't keep your budget people over in a corner. They must understand the, the project as well so that they can account for all the receipts and all the, the line items. Any questions about this? Okay, next slide, please. The administrative pieces tie the application together including an authorized signer completing the grant submission package. You must have the administrative pieces that are requested. Now, when you're doing it online, they'll ask for um, uh, documents to be uh, attached to, the, to, the, um, to your application. If you're doing it in, uh, on email, uh, they're going to ask them to be appendices to your proposal. If you're doing it in a manual uh, proposal, they're going to want to see them attached to your documentation. So the next thing is, this is very, this is critical. Editing all three components, okay? Editing all three components should be in stages. You should have a first review, a second review, and a final once all the components are attached and the signature approval is ready. You schedule these in your proposal schedule that we went through, I think, in uh, the first or second session. You have to schedule those reviews. You can't pretend we don't have time for them. They are critical to ensuring that you have everything you need in the way it's supposed to be. Any questions about that? Not that this thing. Okay, good. Next slide, please. Mr. Sims, next slide. Aha, there we go. Before you draft a proposal, you need to have targeted project proposal to the right prospective funders, donors, and partners. And we've talked about this throughout the sessions. You have to conduct research on likely prospective funders. Now your assignment, you did a really great job. Many of you went into the websites and you could see 
some of the priorities of those funders. That was excellent. The next thing you have to do is establish relationships with funders of interest. Now, this is more with funders within your own country, regional, local funders. You have to establish relationships with them. And one of the ways you do that is creating that platform statement, having a strategic plan report, uh, and then getting introductions to corporations and individuals who might be interested in supporting what you do. Relationships take time. Don't assume you can get your first meeting and you're gonna get something out of it. Relationships can take a year, two years, three years, five years. But as you go along in developing that relationship, you get a sense of whether the relationship is growing. If it's growing, you keep going. If it's not, end it. You don't have a real relationship with them and you're just wasting your time and their time. All right, continue funder relationships between grant proposals. Very important, okay? Uh, if you get a foundation grant or corporate grant, <coughs> you it's for a year, you complete the project, it's very successful, okay? But six months goes by, a year goes by, and now you have a new project. And you go, hmm, I'd like to get back in touch with that corporation because they funded something just like this before. You haven't been in touch with them for that year. You need to stay in touch with them. Even if it's a, a, a holiday greeting, even if it's a, a one-year um, update on what we're doing as an organization, you also want to follow up every number of months, okay, uh, with the sustainability of the project that they funded. All right, that helps them understand that what they gave you was valuable and is sustainable. Any questions about that? No yeah. question about that. That is that is really good relation, public relationship to keep yourself going. Yeah. Good. Next slide, please, Mr. Sims. This is a question that I'd like to have some input. Nope, the one before it. Yes, here we go. Here's the question, people. Can you have information in readiness for drafting proposals? Can you? Yes, yes. or no? Yes. Ah, Johnson. Johnson, where are you? Tell me why. No, oh, a number of people are saying yes. Good. Yes. So when you say yes, you can have information in readiness for drafting proposals. What do you mean? What information can you have in readiness? You, you could be looking at um, things that is happening within your area that you want to accomplish, something that you want to have done. And you would now be doing an assessment of it, talking to persons within the area to see if this is good and so forth. So you'd have that information in an hand. And when you look, you see a call comes out from a grant agency that fits right into that. So you'd have that information in readiness. So That's that true. Can, yeah. That is true, but you're two steps ahead of yourself. Mm. Okay? Think, because think... what information do you have in readiness for drafting proposals? Who are you? What is your history? Who do you serve? Where do I serve? What geographical demographic area do I serve? Do I have experience with awarded grants? Those, that information is the readiness that I have when I look at drafting a proposal, right? Because when I was looking at criteria and eligibility, 
I had to look at those pieces of myself to see if I'm eligible. Okay. If I want to talk to a potential partner, if I want to talk to uh, a community about a particular project, I have to be able to tell them those things about myself first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that information is the stuff you can always have in readiness because okay, that's yeah. going to be the same for everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Makes yeah. sense. Any questions yes, about yes. that? Yes, very much so. I was just, I was just looking at those where I was saying that those are, are something that, you know, true no say normal. So I was looking at a way. Yeah. As I say, those are really the first things you need to be in place. But there's a lot of feedback in the chat as well, Leslie. Okay, let me see some of it. I, I would just like to add that, um, and this ties in with the exercise we did earlier, where we looked through all those grant proposals, uh, um, yeah, that. Um, it, though it didn't apply to all of those situations, it is extremely important to, to be formally registered um, where it's a limited company or cooperative and to have your financials up to date because um, most or many of these, these, these um, calls will, will require you to be in good standing. So um, if, you, if, if, you are, if you have those things out, you need to get them up because with the best of additional readiness information that you have, if you don't have that kind of foundation, it's going to slow you down and, and you, you'll, you'll miss out on opportunities. Absolutely. There was a question there about, do, uh, shouldn't you have a strategic plan? Yes, you should have a strategic plan and a strategic plan report. Remember, they're not that difficult to put together and they're no more than 10 pages because you need that information. Whoever and whomever you talk to wants to know that information about you. And if you have it in front of you, you're not giving misinformation. You're not guessing at the answer. You have it in front of you. That's real important because when we make presentations, sometimes we, uh, Maybe we add a piece of information that isn't, isn't part of the scope that we should be talking about. We should have one script about who we are and what we do. Yes, we need to have our mission and vision as well. Very important. And when you put that time and effort into your mission and vision, that helps you then put together those other things that you need. Good. So, so question here, is it that um, the strategic plan, is it something that we could have um, written, have it there put down, and um, you would say update it as it goes along month to month or year to year, if there's other things to add to it and have it there? Strategic plan should be done usually on a three to five year plan. However, however, I've seen people who do them annually. Yeah. Now, even if you do it three to five years, you should look at it every year to adjust it. To adjust it, okay. okay? Don't yeah. do it month to month. Okay. All right, because that's not planning. Hmm. All right, that's reaction. Okay, next one. Can the next slide, Mr. Sims. Do you need a project design? Yes or no, people? Do you need a project design? Yes, yes, keep going. Uh, I don't think you do because all the projects that you will undertake based on the funding, agency funding will ask for something different. Exactly, but you need a project design. Okay, when you uh, attempt to write a grant, you have to create the project that you're going to write the narrative about. Does that make sense? 
All right. Every grant has a project attached to it. You have to design that project, even if it's I mean, for every grant is going to have a new project design. You have to know what that project is. You have to scope out that project. You have to be able to talk about what the impact will be on the people who will benefit from this award. And people need to have, have to be involved in the community needs assessment, all right? So for a project to be real and good, it has to be community driven and it has to have people's input. So that is something you can do prior to a grant, all right? Now, if you have the needs of your community and the people have told you what the issues are, as grants come out, announcements come out, you can then look at which of their three top priorities match this particular grant announcement. Now you're prepared to design the project accordingly. You already have the research, you have the baseline information from the community, from the people themselves. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. Next slide, please. Okay. We're gonna talk about, this is new to you. What is a pipeline? And I'm telling you right now, there's so much to learn about developing pipelines that this is more for future funding, for future training. A pipeline is a conduit for the components needed to navigate the preparation of a grant. There are numerous components in developing grants. You have to have the donor research, one. Two, you need a registry of experts. When you do a project, you don't always have people on staff to do the work. You're gonna to have to hire people. You wanna know who they are ahead of time. You wanna know that they're, they're good, they're the best. They're the best that Jamaica can find. You want a registry of those experts. You need to do foundation research. Foundations are different than development banks and agencies. All right. So you need to start looking at foundations and putting them in a pipeline, seeing which ones cover the kinds of issues you cover. They uh, fund your particular country or your part of the world. They, they fund your sector, whether it's organizational development, youth, farming, sustainable agriculture, sustainable food, whatever that is, you need to start developing a registry of those foundations so that you can follow them. So every time something comes out from that foundation, you know to look at it immediately, <coughs> you update your pipeline. So a pipeline is gonna be a grid. It's gonna be a chart that you develop for each of these things. You need to do develop a pipeline to track donor projects, like the seven we looked at earlier, okay? Some of them we said, we should keep an eye on this one because even though it's past deadline, it's our country and it's funds stuff that we might do. So I wanna put it in my donor project pipeline and every six months I want to review it and update it to see if there's still funding. They may not fund anymore, so then you can take it off your pipeline. But these tools help you to keep on top of what's coming out, what's available. 
because what you begin to understand through this training is that you can't wait for an announcement to come out. You have a lot of planning to do prior to an announcement in order to be ready for that announcement. Because the announcement only gives you 30 to 45 days to write the proposal. You need to know ahead of time as much as you can. If you have to have partners, if you have to beef up your credibility, um, if you have to get um, rewrite your strategic plan, all of these issues are part of the planning process and the pipelines are tools to help you with your planning. You also wanna develop a pipeline for local partners, regional partners, and partners who are just like you. And when you develop this pipeline, this isn't just about making a list. This is about developing relationships with these organizations so that when an announcement comes out six months from now and you say, you call up a local partner and you say, Here's an announcement. I think the two of us will be really great partners. I'm sending it over. What do you think? We're ready to go with you on this. So you're going to take the lead, but you already know who are going to be the best partners for this. You've already established those relationships. Are there any questions about that? Because... <laughs> You can do a whole training. I mean, you can do a whole week's training on developing these pipelines and the effectiveness of them and how to use them. So are there any initial, all right. Is there anyone who's used pipelines before? Anyone here among our 80 people, has anyone used a pipeline for a tool? Never. Anyone else? Never. No, no. Okay. So this is a this would be Leslie. a new area Leslie. of learning. Leslie. Yes. The pipeline, as you are describing it, is the collaboration with other organizations. That's what they call a pipeline. Well, that's what gets recorded on the pipeline. The pipeline itself is an actual graph, a chart where you're gonna document all these different things, whether it's your, the donor research, registry of experts, foundation research, okay? Partners, potential partners. These are all tools. Now, you're right. It's the relationships that you build and the research that you do that goes into the pipeline, into the chart, so that you have a record of it that you can easily pull up and refer to, that your whole proposal team can look at these pipelines because that information is there. So like um, I, have had really, I have had relationship with um, RADA, SDC, and those agency or agency that will call and inform me about any projects that are out there or any other type of community development that is taking place. Those are what you're talking about. In your case, yes. Now, okay. let's let's take this one step further. You're, um, we're not always going to stay in the position we're in. Yeah. Or we may not have the same role a year from now, three years from now. So yeah. someone is going to help us in our work or they're mm -hmm. gonna take over our work. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. If you have these tools already documented. Yes. Okay? They have these tools to start using. Oh, okay. So that's okay? a pipeline. Yeah, so that's this a just isn't for you. You True. can't have everything up in your head. No. All right. 
many of us do that. We're in this field and we think that if we have it in our head, that's good enough. But our head isn't quick enough sometimes when we have to figure things out and we're working with a team. If you have tools, many of these tools that we've been doing over the last five sessions, okay, they can be shared with partners, with team members, other staff, with volunteers, and that gives them something then as a foundation of information. Mm -hmm. All right, so they're not starting at below zero. Sure. They're starting with a level of information. What, what, this is what, very important with agencies, uh, government, community organizations. Go ahead, who is talking? That's the problem I'm having with government, Lizzie. They <laughs> the main stick, they normally they hold on to information. They, they, they wife it up. Yes. They don't, they don't willingly share information. Exactly. Exactly. And when you have these registries, okay, this is now available to your entire organization. Anyone can go into it. All right. And it's updated as you need to update it. Every time you look at a foundation to see if that grant is available, you're going back into that, that, uh, that pipeline and you're updating it, okay? You put the date down and you say, uh, nothing new, okay? So that when someone from the outside comes in, they have all these tools to look at now. Now, do they understand those tools? Not totally, no. They need you to sit down and show them what those tools mean. But there's something to work with. Like the gentleman just said, government is very good about hiding things, okay? It's not hiding. We, uh, we're human beings. We all think that nothing, that the world is dependent on us, okay? If we're not there, the world's going to fall apart. All right, so if our agency, if we're not there, our agency's gonna fall apart. Well, these are the tools that we begin to put in place because we're not indispensable. None of us are indispensable. I had a terrible, serious car accident when I was 45 years old. I was the acting director of an organization and we were leaving for Washington DC the next morning to do a complete national training. It was a serious car accident. <laughs> I was in the hospital for three weeks, all right? Everything had been documented. My team knew exactly what to do. When they got on the plane the next day, they knew exactly what was necessary, how to do it. Everything was there. Contingency plans and everything. That's how you do grant writing. It's planning. Any questions about that? All right. Any questions about, all right, <clears throat> let me give you an example of a pipeline that I put together for experts. I was working for an international consulting firm and we decided that we wanted to be the best or one of the top three procurement specialists in the world. Someone put their mute on. Something is wrong with you guys. Okay, Mike, the company I worked for wanted to be one of the top three procurement experts in the world. We were up against people like Comonix and Deloitte. That's how high up we wanted to be. All right. So I knew that I was going to be the head of that division. So I knew that one of the ways you win a proposal is the quality of the people that you hire. And you have to have the very best in the world 
when you're competing to be the best in the world. Okay, so I started a registry. I went through our entire database of consultants and anyone that had anything to do with procurement, I wrote them an email and I gave them a form to fill out. I explained that I was putting together a registry of procurement experts. I needed to, them to answer all these different questions about them and I would have it on file whether they were bilingual, uh, what areas of procurement they had uh, experience in, uh, what countries they had served in. There was a whole list of things I wanted them to tell me. I put together this registry and every time a procurement announcement came out, I was able to tell the chairman of my board within a half hour, if we had the caliber of people necessary to go for that grant. All I had to do is go through my registry after reading the proposal, match up what the proposal wanted against my registry, and I knew if I had the right people. And if I had to go ahead, then within the next 15 minutes, I was contacting them and getting them an exclusive agreement with them that they would be on our proposal. That's before Comonix and Deloitte could get to them. Okay? And I had them signed on to us. There's competition for the best people. Let, let's see. Uh, a quick question. Uh, yes. How do you deal with the you, you have the registry with all uh, these experts, but can you go ahead and, and say, yes, we have the expertise before you have contacted them to see if they are available to work on that? How do you navigate that? that okay. Part? I'm not telling the donor I have them. I'm telling my team that I have people who can do it and are the best. Now they say, yes, we're gonna we're gonna proceed. We want to look at this um, this announcement. We want to go further. So I'm now going to contact these people to see their eligibility because okay. that's not the only piece of determining whether we go for this proposal. There are other components we also have to, check out but my piece i could do within a half hour all right and we knew whether we had people or not that's only one piece of the big picture someone's doing construction huh <laughs> Odin, Odin williams you can you can mute the mic bro He's <laughs> All right. The host can actually mute the person, you know, whoever is hosting the Zoom can mute the, the person. Well, it's definitely not me. Okay, good. Are there any other questions about these pipeline registries? Okay, let me ask this question. Is this something you think you'd like to know more about? Yes or no? Yes, I would like to know much more about that. Well, let me see in the chat. How many, not just one person. I can't just do one person. Okay. <laughs> good, good. That's excellent. So obviously I've given you, I, I've made it interesting enough that you think you might want to know more about it. That's good. All right. Mr. Sims, would you bring us to the next next uh, PowerPoint slide? Where to find grants? All right. You're going to get a list from me that tells you where to be potential donors. 
I'm not going to give you web links on the first part. I do have a list of foundations that will have direct web links. Um, but one of the things about resources is I was thinking about Jamaica and who potential donors might be. Well, first of all, you've got USA Jamaica. You already know that. Obviously, because Farmer to Farmer is being funded through USA Jamaica. You're part of the Commonwealth. That means that DFID from the UK is a potential donor that you should be looking at. Anything that comes out of DFID, you should actually go into their website and see what they're doing in Jamaica. Australia Aid, Australia. Again, it's part of your Commonwealth. Um, they do a lot of funding in the Caribbean. I don't know if they're doing funding in Jamaica yet, but I know that I received a um, Australia aid grant in St. Lucia and we're looking at extending and getting another one from them. So definitely put them on your list. JICA, J-I-C-A, Japan. <clears throat> Japan does a lot of work in areas uh, in a lot of the island nations. So you should be checking them out. They also, um, there's some foundations in Japan. Uh, they might be under JICA, but they probably are linked to JICA. They actually fund things like construction, which is very, very difficult to get funded. Okay. They also sometimes fund vehicles and transportation. Again, an area that's very difficult to get funded. So I would say to you, look them up and see what their potential is. <clears throat> Canada. It was CIDA. I believe they've changed their or their development uh, agency's name. Uh, Canada, again, part of your Commonwealth. They do a lot of funding in the Caribbean. Find out what they do in Jamaica. Uh, I know that GTZ of um, Germany also does funding in the Caribbean. Also look at some of the other European countries like France, like Spain, like Portugal. See if they do anything in Jamaica. If they do, if that's one of the countries they serve, Put it on your pipeline so that you're aware. You're aware when announcements come out, you know to look for those. The EU, which is the European Union, definitely look at stuff from the European Union. The World Bank, they do development work all over the world. The embassies, check out the countries that have embassies in the Caribbean and then check those embassies for potential funding. Because most of them have funding and they're, they're not necessarily big amounts of funding, but they might be good ways to start a project, uh, have seed money for a small startup uh, nonprofit, especially agricultural co-ops. Those are good sources. There is a, a new development bank. It is funded by China and India. It is meant to be a, an alternative to the World Bank. The last I saw, they still are not doing any kind of funding. However, keep that in the back of your mind. Both India and China have a lot of interest in the Caribbean. And a development bank that comes out of that region would be a good place to find funding, especially for agriculture. The United Nations. 
there's UNDP, there's UNOPS, there's UNICEF, there's IFID. There's, there's lots of different agencies within the United Nations. Now, the problem with the United Nations is it's such a complex system that they have tons of different agencies and they are all independently managed, which means that you have to go through each one of them. So if you hear of one doing some work in Jamaica, write it down, check out that particular agency and see what's available. All right. There are foundations, <clears throat> you, international foundations, both in the US, uh, Europe, Canada, Japan, Australia. Those are independent foundations like Gates Foundation, Rockefeller, Ford, MacArthur, um, uh, Open Society. There's all kinds of, and, and I'm more familiar with the USA based uh, international foundations, but I have written fa foundation grants for Canadian foundations, for European foundations, for Japanese foundations. So I know they exist <clears throat> and they have an interest. Foundations have their own like list. Foundations don't have to have a political agenda. They can decide they like Jamaica and they want to fund in Jamaica. Find out, you know, as you do your research, this is, doesn't mean that you sit down and spend the next six months doing research. This means that for two hours every week, you dedicate it to researching and filling in your pipelines and reading announcements. Don't overdo it, but dedicate an hour or two hours every single week because it is that important to your process. Okay. Partners, you are a partner when you get a a grant, when you get a, a contract awarded to you, you become a partner of that donor. <clears throat> so because you are getting, you're getting services from farmer to fund, farmer under USAID, under Department of State in the United States of America, you are a partner you, all of you right now are partners to that whole system. That's important because now you can say, oh yes, one of my partners is Farmer to Farmer USAID. You don't have to be getting money from them, but you are a partner to them because you have this reciprocal relationship. Okay, any questions about that? People sometimes are confused about that. Uh, so you're saying, um, Leslie, if we're on, if we're trained by, for example, this training, mm -hmm. could, we, could we consider USA a, a partner after this training? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, when I do farmer to farmer, and I've done lots of other USAID projects. I've also uh, done some volunteer work for the Peace Corps. I am actually a partner to them and they are a partner to me. So on my website, I can actually say I am a partner to USAID, Farmer to Farmer, Peace Corps. And that's legitimate. No money has to change hands. There's a question in the chat that says, would this training be a partnership with USAID? This is from Joan Dove. Yes. And everyone on this is a partner with RADA. I was just thinking that yeah. if persons were looking at the logo and it was me, I would say, yes, I have three partners right away because I have rather USAID partners. 
Partners of America, and I also have Agro Invest. Exactly. So I have, we'll show these three partners. Exactly. Okay. And when you look at other organizations and you wonder how they got all these partnerships, you actually have them too. You're just not recognizing that these are partnerships. Okay. So I have been robbing my organization of partnership for that I haven't been even knowing. Our, our organization, my organization, we have partnership with USAID, European Union, Peace Corps, RAD. So all of it, whoa. Yes, yes, UN, you said you had a UN grant? Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 absolutely, they're your partners. So when I'm writing a grant, then I can put my partners. Ah, oh, thanks. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Um, websites. I'm going to be giving you a list of stuff with the final, all right, all my work that I have done, all my paperwork, all my soft work, okay, you will get all five sessions worth, including the research documentation that I did for this particular series. All right, you will be receiving that. I'll be sending it to uh, Mr. Sims and he will be somehow getting it to you. All right, just like you've been getting the other information on the recordings and the homework assignments and the, and the surveys and tests. Um, Leslie, some of, us not, some of us not getting as yet. Mr. Margaret, we're working, working on it, Mr. Margaret. The yeah. Rada email is giving problems. <laughs> when I spoke to the IT department, they're saying to send it to Rada's Gmail and Rada, when it comes to Rada's Gmail address, they will send it to me and for me to send it to the participants. Yeah. So you hear so the complication, me. Leslie. So but some of us not me. getting it. I'm just making you know that some of us not getting it at this time. That is just the last, the, the last homework. Okay. That is when the problem started. So I've asked uh, Mr. Sims to send it to my Gmail and I'll try to get it out as well as I had announced that if persons have an alternative email address to just use that in the meantime until we solve the whole rather mail issues. So I was in the dark for most of today, Lizzie, because of Maxine. <laughs> he just I appreciate to go what you're saying. When you were assessing the, the other persons that are trying to about the assessment. <laughs> Uh, the technology is a problem. Okay, um, we we're one of the uh, ways in Africa. This is a huge issue, and what we did was um, on the website of the host, we were able to make a link, and that attached all the training materials. Of course, we did not do online training. All right, it was all face to face, but. All that information then was put onto a link on the website of the host so that people could forever go into that link and get the training. Now, we're doing something a little bit more complicated this time because we're doing it online. So we're doing the recordings and the recordings are very heavy, okay? So I am looking to Mr. Sims to use his breadth of knowledge and experience to make recommendations on how to make sure everyone gets what they need. However, just in case you feel that you got caught between the cracks and fell between the cracks, here is my information. Yeah, thank you. you. That's what I feel. Thank you, Liz. I thank you. I have my own Facebook page for yeah, my own organization. You. Thank you, Leslie. You have no saved problem. a life. Yes. And you can contact exactly. me and tell me what, and, and you can contact me about things that you're working on, any questions you've had about the course, as you try to implement some of this stuff, um, feel free to contact me. I can answer questions I'd be delighted to. I can tell you that many of the people who have taken my courses over the years have advanced in their countries into bigger positions and they attributed it one to their training, but they also understood 
as they were going higher and higher in their organizations, the need for more training within their own organizations. It didn't help that they were the only ones trained. So I've had the luxury and the honor of being asked to go into ministries in certain countries <laughs> and do trainings of whole divisions because one of the people took my course 10 years ago and is now the head of that division. So that was a wonderful feeling to be able to be um, respected like that and remembered, but the thrill of being able to do that kind of training. I have to tell you that I learn more than I teach. So every training I do, I know you think I'm giving you lots of information, but I'm telling you, I learn more from all of you than I can possibly train you. So I wanna say thank you to all of you, not just for participating, but for giving me a lot more knowledge about what's going on in Jamaica, some of your issues, I know online it's difficult to be able to share a lot, but uh, I look forward to a future relationship as long as you let people know that you have continued need. If you don't have continued need, then there probably won't be any more trainings. Any questions? Then, then, yes, I have a question. Um, let's go back to the partners. The partners that are on your on, on this training, if I decided to write a proposal, can I just put them as my partners without first informing those organizations that they're I'll be putting them on my proposal? No, you can't do that. You can't put them on your proposal as partners to the proposal. In your narrative, you can explain that you have had partnerships with USA with RADA, okay? Unless they're a collaborating partner on the proposal, you can't list them as a proposal partner. They are a historical partner of your experience. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay. Oh, there was okay. one, sorry, there was one question in the chat where Manifa was asking, does this mean we can add you to pipelines? Say that again? Does this mean we can add you to pipelines? Because you were talking about pipelines and that is where your document resource persons or... Yeah, you know, absolutely. From you have worked with Amaran Village. And if you look at my Facebook, you can see that I will add Jamaica to the countries that I serve. And uh, in fact, the announcement for this training is on my, my Facebook. So I guess, are there any more questions? Is there a so, separate um, course? Is there a separate me. course for? Okay, so that is what um, Leslie has been trying to explain. That unfortunately, I cannot believe that for five weeks we have been meeting face to face, at least once per week, and we're at the end. And as you see, we are looking to say no, this cannot be the end. But for us, for it to continue, sometimes even to probably dig deeper into topics that you wanted to learn more about. That is why we're going to give you the evaluation sheets, and that is where we will know from each of you what areas need to be investigated further and how many persons and all of these things so that we can arrange future training. So it is really up to you. It is not up to us. We, we did all that groundwork and we saw the need where, yes, there are a lot of persons who are interested in really getting access to grants, and especially since we know that you know, funding is not always available, money is tight all around. So we wanted to develop skills in being able to ask, get access to grants. And we um, put together this training session. So it's up to you now to say that as he was in indicating, have you learned everything that you need now and you can go off and start writing your grant proposals or are there more information that you think 
that are areas that you wanted more clarification in, then we could see how best we could do some follow up. So it's really up to you. We're going to be giving you the assessment sheet for you to fill out. Again, you'll get the post test to do. So that will also give us an indication to say that yes, you actually did learn everything that we were trying to get you to learn. And I've, 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 took, I've taken a little glimpse at the post test again. And I'm seeing that, yes, I, I think I'm running through even faster now. <laughs> so you can look, I mean, that will also give us some information as to how to proceed. So it's really up to you to let us know what it is Excuse that you me. want to do, and then we'll facilitate it. Hello. Yes, sir. Um, I, try, I want to find out by what means, in the email or WhatsApp you'll be sending. If you look in the chat, you're seeing a link now, and it is sending you to the registration form, the post test, and also the evaluation sheet form is oh, that that thing to the right of the screen. It's it's it, it's in the chat. It was just posted in the chat. So once you click on these links, it will take you to different pages that will allow you to share the information with us. Hello. You're seeing it. Oh. The one that says um, uh, sir, final sir, register and post justice. test. Yes, I see, I see one says, yes, final register and post test. That is one. Okay. And then below that, they have okay. series evaluation link. So it is oh, on that yeah. evaluation okay. form that you will give us your information, your feedback on the session. Okay. Right. And then we will take all of that into consideration and see how we can plan it again. And let me tell you, the fact that all of you have logged on and so many persons have logged on and you're stuck it out to five weeks because you have some persons who may just have come for a one session and wouldn't have come back for a second session, is encouraging to us to say that, yes, when we do plan it again, we will have full participation. So even just your presence, even just the amount of persons that are here also assist us when we're trying to put together programs. So I want to and, thank you all for that. And Miss, oh. excuse me, Miss, and you must take in consideration not everybody. Oh, what's is... your name, please? Max, I'm Maxine, I'm Maxine Brown. I'm the livestock specialist at RADA, and I have been doing collaborative work with USAID Partner to Partner Program for about probably the past two years now. So yes, USAID is one of my partners, and, and this is where I work at RADA. So yes, so it's and a Miss, RADA. Um, mm -hmm. I have, you have to take in oh. consideration some of us to Miss I um, I just use Zoom for my granddaughter's class. So I'm just basically learning to, how to really. So I have to take my time and, you know, I, I'm following the sessions, but to take my time to answer some of these things here. So I have to and do a lot of things. I have to do a lot of What I do is take a lot of notes. So. <laughs> it is COVID that kind of placed us in this uh, situation. Uh, Brown. We're used to organizing it and having persons meet at a venue and oh, we go through everything. Well, well I enjoy, I enjoy, and it's, it's a new, it's a new way of learning. Yeah, I really enjoy it. <laughs> but like to, to, to answer some of the questions, I can immediately have to kind of sit down and fathom how I'm going <laughs> to, how and, I'm going to uh, use the link. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Mr. Dawkins. Go ahead, Mr. Dawkins. Uh, yes, I, I'm asking is pipeline, is there a separate course for pipeline? Okay, so that is what she was trying to explain that. What she gave you was just a little summary of what the pipeline actually is about. But if it is okay. something that persons would want to dig deeper to say how it is that you really develop the pipeline, how you identify the partners and what is it that you record about them and all of these things, then we could arrange to say that that is another training session. Okay. Explore okay. all of that fully because as she was saying, there's so many elements to it. It's almost like another five week course just to do that. Oh. Oh. Right. Okay. So that... like I said, it's up to you to say what it is that you're interested in and how many persons and then we can arrange it. Right. So okay. at this point in time, I am going okay, to thanks. ask before I wrap up totally, I'm going to ask. I, I'm not sure, Ms. Martha Johnson, the director of USAID, she's on the session. Hello, uh, Ms. Brown. Yes, sir. The 
series evaluation does not work. Um, I have it up, but I'm not able to select anything. I'm not sure if anybody else is having the same issue. I am having the same issue. I'm, I'm having the same issue. I, I am not having that issue. I am ticking and could, going along. Ms. Brown, could you email it to us? Because Ms. Brown will not have anything to do with this. So I'm getting through. Yes. I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing persons are able to, to do the series evaluation. I'm getting some responses. I'm not sure if you could use a, um, a different browser. So someone suggested use Chrome instead. Try that. Yes, Chrome is the one I'm using. And, and if push comes to shove and you're really, really not getting through, no matter which browser you use, I think probably what you could do is send your email. Send me the, send an email. email, email it. One at I will time. email it as well. Exactly. So yes, I say, just email, to, just email it to, to, to everyone. Exactly. Email. So what you could do that as well, so just email it to everybody. If you have done it already, then you wouldn't need to do it again. And then you could also do it in your own time at that time. That's what I said, Ms. Brown. You could do it in our own time. OK. So, so Ms. Brown, just a moment there. When you email it to us, who do we email it back to? Just pretend it, just um, um, press reply, and it will go back to Mr. Sims. Okay. Because it's going to come yes. from him. So you just press reply to that um, email address. As a matter of fact, no, the link will take set you. up. It, it, it's exactly. going to be a link. Yeah, yes, it's going, it's to, be going to be a, just like how you do the yeah. register. Yeah, he's not going to send you the sheet itself for you to fill out. What he's going to email you is the link. And so once you click on that link, it will, but you will get more time to can sort it out if, if by any chance you're having a lot of issues now. Oh, yes. But just yeah. to get someone to assist you then to, to fill it out. How do you get our email? Uh, and Mr. Sims? Thank you, thank you for the links there are there. I, I get them and finally I do download the videos and help other person by sending it to other person. Good job, man. No problem. No problem. And just in case yeah. because my brother times in again, we're still working on it from Rada. Yeah, um, well anything I, I have a little problem with that Rada doing this one. Say that again, you're having problems with? Oh, no, I have a little problem. We, I have done some training and some incubators that were um, funded by USCN. We have not been able to use those incubators. What does that mean? As small um, processors. I understand what you're saying because I know about the incubators. The only thing I could tell you is that if you could send me an email, mm -hmm. Just as you're indicating that you have done some work at the past the incubator and tell me which incubator the location and to say that you're having difficulty accessing. And, and, and Ms. Brown, Ms. Brown, yes, you mm. could say what processes you do on done at the incubators as well. That would be a great help. Yeah, man, so I'm saying that you can send the email to me and I will forward it to the person who is in charge of the incubators to follow up with you. And I will follow up it as well, sir. Yeah, from the and not leave it up to Maxine alone. I will follow up for you as well. Yes. It's yes. Go. He's a waiter, so they can mute them. They can mute people. So can... <laughs> um, this I, girl, I, where I, do I, you... I, the yes, email sir. now. How do, you, how do you get emails? No, Mr. Um, for my email. How oh, oh, email? No, remember there's a registration sheet. Have you uh, been registering for the courses? The registration sheet. Have you uh, been filling out the registration sheet? Once you fill out the registration sheet, you will have the email for all participants. It is that it is it is those emails that Mr. Sims will be compiling and sending back information to those emails. So make sure you're filling out the registration okay. sheet. Okay. Okay. Right? So that we can have your email address. And remember too that we were speaking about the the certificate oh, for persons, especially who have been so diligent yes. in all sessions or many sessions. Yes. What we're going to probably have to do is do, do it digitally. So you'll have to print it yourself. You'll get it in the soft copy version. Okay. And then you'll print it. All of these things will be made available to you. So that is why we're going to work. Give us the email address. Give us the email address. It's working. 
But if you have been receiving information from Mr. Sims in the past, then that means we have your we have your, your email. Mm. Okay. Mrs. Brown, this session was very informative, but I'll have to leave because my device is saying E. It needs charging. Well, I'm sorry, but you know what? It's at a good time too because we have practically reached the end. I would hate for it to finish during the presentation. I mean, I am at work, but I had to steal the time. So I have my earphone plugged in. It's very informative. I'm at is it, work, but I mean. Let me tell you, it's the first I've ever been happy to hear anybody stealing. Yes, because. <laughs> 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 Yes, I actually stole it time, so I, I, I navigated between my work time and it. So I have my <laughs> earphone plug in, and it's very you informative. Your company, your company may benefit from it later on, though. So it is yeah. my community. It's my community that is going to benefit from it. Well, that this so the because we are going to be calling on Mr. Dobson. We are, no, I was telling them about it at our CDC yeah, last night. Good. I was telling them about Mr. Dobson. Now we are going to be calling on Mr. Starry Dobson. He's there uh, in the name. <laughs> no, but let me tell you how sometimes you have to look at it. Depends on how you look at it. A company will say, well, I have a worker who is so proficient and efficient in conducting oh, projects and, and programs in the community. And so they can say their staff is at a particular level and they can brag about that. So yes, you're actually benefiting your company without you even knowing it. That's true. And they will say they have a, when you have your project, they'll say you are a partner because they actually oh. work for them. And Sounds good. Sounds good. Maybe that's why we need the pipeline training. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we know how to do it. All right. So thank that's you important. for joining us. Okay, so let us just do some 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 thank yous because I mean five weeks and I mean we had it was almost near flawless. Everything went smoothly. It could have been worse because I've seen other Zoom meetings and you know all sorts of problems, recorded problems, internet problems, and all of these things. So we're very grateful for that. So we have to thank the good Lord up above for ensuring that all of us was keeping safe. And even though some of us may have had a little bit of internet issues, we were still able to log on and get all the information. And some of us have a maxing issue. Where is the mute? Mr. 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 Since we find that mute. <laughs> it's a pity we have to mute that there. But anyway, so <laughs> I just want to formally and officially thank Ms. Cosgrove, known to us as Leslie. Yes. The wealth of information that you have shared to us. I don't even know how to do you justice to thank you. I, sure. The words that I'm thinking about, you know, to say that, you know, you are a gem. The fact that you have share the information with us. I saw somebody even write in the in the, the thing in the chat to say you're a philanthropist because you're making information available to us. And I think Mr. McGregor, that is why he wants to link it to so much because you know, he was complaining about persons holding up information and not sharing it. So he's so pleased to hear that you'll be willing to share whatever information you have with us. So we're grateful for that. The willingness to even come back and to say do future training, which is something that we have to look at as well. We thank you for your time and your patience and your whole personality overall that made it so easy for everybody to feel comfortable at the end. Yeah. Right? So, I yeah. mean, we're so grateful for that. And no I'm, going to ask, I want to, I'm going to have persons from the chat can also do it because, like I said, I don't think I alone could really do it justice in, in, in the way I want to thank you. So, I'm really going to ask participants to also say you know a few words who would like to as i yeah, continue, I just want to say until we reach there because we just want to i know you all we want to catch you know so i'm just going to just finish off and give you your time so you can speak to me because you of yourselves right i have to thank not so marcia zoom johnson, savvy marcia johnson who is the director of usaid as i indicated no earlier we have been partnering for a little while so, and that was before COVID and now COVID kind of pushed us in the direction of, you know, being familiar with the whole Zoom platform and doing all of these training sessions. So, you know, sometimes you have to look for the good thing out of the bad situation, which is the fact that we, we are now on the online platform and that is where the world seems to be moving a lot now. I also want to thank Mr. Sims, Mr. Sims, Mr. Sims. 
she has been <laughs> so helpful to us. She has been the one working hard in the background, ensuring that you all get your information, developing all your CV sheets that you have been working on in terms of your registration sheets and your assessment sheets and your and your post tests and pre tests. He's the one that has been developing these sheets, making sure that you're getting it on time. He has been making sure that, you know, when we're doing our breakout rooms, it is going smoothly and everybody is logging on and getting everything done. So I want to thank you so, so much, Mr. Sims. I, we, we really appreciate it. What you have been doing. We also have a few more persons to thank. Maybe they not they weren't as visible as Mr. Sims. If Mr. Sims could have provided provide us with his contact. Yes, he will do that. Mr. Sims, you can do that in the chat. But you have his contact already because if you have been receiving your training information, the email is actually coming from him. So you actually have his email address already. Yeah. <laughs> but just in case, so if you, if you feel like maybe you just want it personally, again, Mr. Sims, you can put your email address in the chat. I also want to thank um, Ms. Mar Ms. Simone Williams, who is also a part of the USAID team, and Mr. Garrett Lewin is also a part of the USAID team. You see, sometimes we have our little, um, what we call an our little evaluation meetings or after each training session, so you don't see when we're all together trying to discuss and what should we do next and how to proceed, and these persons are always a part of these sessions, giving suggestions to and recommendations. So I want to thank them for being part of the team. And we also have our local consultant, who is also a part of the whole training session. She would have logged on from time to time, and her name is Dr. Lillian Lilme Walder. So we want to thank her also for her input. So, Mr. Mr. Sims, is there anybody I forgot from the USAID side of things? No, Miss Brown. Um, we have to say back back at you. Thank you very much. <laughs> for being such a great host and, and um, keeping everything running smoothly and, and, and organized. And the team from RADA really appreciate it. It, it was an easy fit for us as um, on the USA side in terms of someone who understands, someone who is able to relate and get trained and organized. Okay, so thank you all very much. And I just like um, with Ms. Cosgrove, I don't know how, how to even say, find the words to thank the participants. You have been such a great team of individuals. To log on, it's a pleasure always to log on and see all of you. And remember, like I said, the time seems to run so quickly, but it has been five weeks. No, it has been two five weeks, sessions. three weeks, five <laughs> sessions. Thanks. Jesus, I feel like it's five weeks because I, get to, I feel like I get to know you all so much that like we're just here for quite a while. But yes, it is five sessions. And it's always a pleasure having you all for every session. So um, thank you all very much. And I'm going to allow you all now. I mean, hopefully we're not, um, you know, jumping in and, and, and blocking everybody else. But for you also to respond and to get a chance to, you know, say your last few words. Because after this, it's just going to be about you really logging in, doing your process, doing your evaluation, and doing your registration. So and thank you all very much. I really appreciate it. And thank you for doing such. Excuse me, Miss Brown. A minute, please. A minute, please, participants. Um, just advertising. Um, we'll be having future trainings. Uh, we'll be starting with cocoa fermentation next week, and moving on to top bar highs with apiculture, bee pollen collection, propolis and value-added products from apiculture. Those links will be forwarded, will be on the, uh, on the website and they may be forwarded to interested persons also. And thank you all again. So you have okay, all so, our emails, will you okay. forward it to them? So that was Mr. Lewis from USAID. So he's just saying that, yes, they're going to have these future trainings. And what Mr. Sims could do is that he could send it out to all of you. Some of you may be interested in the trainings that he had just yeah. announced. Or if it is that you're not interested, sometimes you know persons who could benefit from it, so you could share that information with them. So we will email all of that, all, all that announcement that he just did in terms of these training sessions and their start times, 
and their date and even the link can be sent to you. So you can help to spread the word along. As, as a community person, uh, a community developer, 